Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro and in today's episode I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, programming on the C64 and specifically the C64 Studio programming tools. So I'm not gonna show you a lot of actual programming in this video but I'm gonna show you how to use uh, the C64 Studio so that you can start programming and making some games or applications yourself for the C64. The C64 Studio is uh, made by a guy called Georg Rottensteiner in Germany and uh, this is his uh, website and uh, here you can uh, download the latest version and uh, get some information about uh, the program and uh, it seems like he's also uh, making some games himself. For those of you who are uh, programmers or developers, the C64 Studio is uh, an application programmed in uh, .NET. So I have already downloaded and uh, unpacked uh, the program onto my computer. And uh, there's not an installer, you just unzip and copy the whole thing into a folder wherever you want to. And uh, it contains uh, some files, but the program itself is this, c64studio.exe. So let's start up and uh, see how it looks. So if you are uh, working on uh, modern application development, you are probably familiar with uh, using an IDE or integrated uh, developer environment. And the C64 Studio is uh, just that. It's an IDE for a Commodore 64 development. So back in the day when I programmed on the Commodore 64 and probably everyone else did, we actually did all the work on the Commodore 64 itself. We programmed on the actual machine, either in basic or in a machine code monitor. And, uh, and every time we changed the code, we actually had to save it out to disk and uh, then test and then load again and then make changes and so on and also you had a lot of files to keep track on on those floppy disks and you needed to uh, gather everything together to make the complete uh, program so that was kind of uh, time consuming however there's no reason to do it like that nowadays when we have uh, modern powerful machines like uh, this windows pc running windows 11 and now we can actually gather all the necessary files in uh, one place and have all the files organized in a solution. You see over here we have something called a solution explorer that will have all uh, the files and the structure on uh, the different uh, parts of the game or application you are creating. And the nice thing about C64 Studio is that it is integrated with the Commodore Vice emulator so that you can actually directly from your code here compile and run the program immediately and you see the output and then you can make some changes and run again. No, I'm not going to go through every part of uh, this program. That will take too much time, but I am going through uh, the most important bits. So I have already made a little solution and um, to make a new solution you go here and select a new solution and then you give it a name and uh, where is the base folder where you want to store all your files. So I already did that so I'm going to open uh, my solution. And I saved it into here my new 64 game. And it's a S64 file. So now that is loaded and you can see all the files I have. I have uh, organized it into um, four different projects. One project for the intro, one for the gameplay one, one for resources and one for uh, a level editor. So everything here is just some um, examples there's no real code in here or anything that uh, remotely uh, resembles a game and i have all my files uh, open here they have uh, different tabs here and uh, <laughs> yeah as you can see it handles uh, different types of files we'll go through it but for now i'm gonna close uh, everything 
Except for this, I pretend I'm making a loader for my game and uh, that file is the loader.bas and that is a basic file. So it's a basic program that runs in basic on uh, common ore and uh, here is the code for it. And it even has the same font as you can see. So um, you get a little bit um, of the same feeling as on a real Commodore 64. And it even supports different versions of BASIC. The Commodore 64 has BASIC V2, but it supports uh, V10, 3.5, 4.5 and 7, which is uh, the BASIC that you find on the Commodore 128 and some other uh, BASICs. So now I am finished uh, with the first version of uh, my loader and I'm gonna run this. So these uh, buttons up here has to do with uh, building or compiling and running things. And the build mm. is uh, actually nothing that happens in BASIC because it's an interpreted language. But uh, you can see it says build successful, so it did some checks. And if you do a mistake, like I, for example, type print instead of uh, print, then you can see that it is marked in red. And if I now press build or F7, it comes up with an error here. Uh, yeah, there's actually two errors. I didn't increase the line number, so it's uh, underlined with red. So I need to fix that. And now let's try again. And uh, no, it actually build successfully, but there's still an error and that's why this is in red. So I changed that to uh, print. So let's see if we can build and run this now. Press this uh, button here. And sure enough, there it uh, starts in the voice emulator and uh, it printed out uh, the things that I have in my code. And we can uh, list the program here and uh, run it again so that was um, the basic uh, there's uh, probably lots of things you can do here uh, you can renumber things uh, for example if i wanted to start on line 100 and uh, step by one and press ok and then all the lines get new uh, numbers all right that was uh, basic now i move into machine code and I'm not going to pretend that I can program in machine code anymore. I used to do it back in the day, but uh, I have forgotten that over the last uh, 30 years. But uh, let's say I have the code here for level one of the game. So I open this and here I, I have written uh, just a few lines of machine code and uh, I indicated the start address as 1496 and that is uh, a decimal number not hex and i load the number seven into the a register and then i store the a register into hex d020 which is uh, the memory location for the border color and then i return from the subroutine and now we actually get some more uh, control here now we can actually compile uh, this code and uh, check if it uh, works out yeah it uh, was successful and if you had a mistake or a warning it will show up down here under the messages so let's say we we type some illegal operation here if we compile yeah it says here unused label so it uh, think it's a label but that's not correct so we just uh, remove that and uh, build again and uh, then we can try and run this. So this is a machine code and it starts on memory location 4096. So when we run it, it will actually not run by itself. Let's do it. It uh, now loaded, but uh, it's only loaded into memory. You have to start the program by using the sys command 4096. And it seems like the program we made uh, worked because it changed uh, the border to yellow. So let's uh, make a little change here. Uh, let's uh, change it uh, first to yellow and then to color 8. I don't remember what color that is. And uh, now we want to stop this program in the middle just to check 
check uh, the status on the registers and things like that. And then we can uh, use something called a breakpoint. You see here's a, a red ball here, and that means when we run this program, it will break here and stop. And we can go in here and check uh, the register and the memory and things like that. So now I'm not going to use build and run, but I'm going to use build and debug because we're going to debug this program. But um, that is actually the same. It will load it into um, the voice emulator at uh, address 1496. So we're going to call uh, that. And now we see here in the, the program listing that uh, it actually stopped here on this yellow line. So now we can step through the program uh, it, and we can also check um, the memory and the registers. So we see now that the A register here has the value of zero. So now we're going to step one uh, line ahead. So use these buttons here for uh, stepping. You can step one line at a time or you can step over or you can uh, step out of a routine or something so i'm going to step over uh, the next line and now it jumps down to this line and now we see that the register has actually changed to the value we put into it which is seven and then we step to the next and still it is uh, seven in the a register but now we have um, store that value into uh, memory location D020. So we step one more step then and now it should have stored 08 in the A register and it actually has. And then we can just press the go button here just to complete the program. And the border turned into orange. All right, so the next I want to cover is how to make some resources for uh, your game. And uh, with resources, I mean things like sprites or uh, graphics. And uh, yeah, there is a built-in sprite editor. You just go to project and add new uh, sprite set. Give it a name. I already made a sprite set, but I'm going to make uh, a bombs sprite set. So uh, now we're in um, the sprite editor and uh, yeah, all the squares uh, in this area here are sprites. So you can switch between them. So if I go to the first sprite, then I can start um, a drawing and the sprite. So this is uh, first bomb. <laughs> I am not uh, very good at uh, graphics but uh, yeah so you can see uh, the sprite how it will look and if we want to copy this sprite we can just use the regular copy and paste functions in windows we can have several copies and then maybe if we want to make an animation we can just uh, change uh, the different copies to um, make up for an animation when where you change the sprites so this is gonna blow up pretty soon <laughs> so of course you can make a multicolor sprites and uh, things like that you can uh, also <laughs> import from an image let's say i have uh, yeah i have a little uh, image here i have uh, this one here the red one and uh, yeah it can uh, be converted into a sprite from a PNG file. Well, that didn't seem to work very well, so <laughs> not really sure what happened here, but uh, I have come across some bugs here, of course. Um, a program that's made by one person, so there will, of course, be some bugs. But if you have a sprite and you want to use it in your program, you can go to um, export you can export it to basic data just copy this whole thing into um, <laughs> yeah into your program and then you can use uh, the data you exported in the program or you can export it to uh, a file same goes for uh, this uh, graphics screen type i have um, already made one here but uh, yeah you can add a new graphic screen so let's call it uh, load screen 
So now you can select different uh, parts of uh, that screen and you can start uh, drawing your graphics. Yeah. You get the point and you build up uh, the whole image with uh, these cells. But also here you can uh, import from uh, a regular uh, PNG file. So uh, I'm going to import from image and uh, I have uh, again the same images. Let's uh, import uh, Bart Simpson. So this is uh, how the image looks on uh, your computer and this is how it will look on the Commodore 64. And you can do some tweaking with uh, the colors and uh, things like that. But uh, let's just uh, try this one. And the, the image is actually uh, taller than the current screen has because uh, Commodore has 320 by 200. So we can either clip the image or adjust the screen size. So I'm going to clip the image. Then we go back to the screen and we can see that we have a Bart Simpson in Commodore graphics. And again, here you can uh, export this image data either to uh, basic data or uh, yeah, both decimal and uh, hex or you can uh, export it to uh, different types of data that you can use in your program. So let's import uh, another one, a picture of myself. <laughs> so now you can see this picture has a lot of uh, color information so it is a bit uh, hard to convert it into uh, the Commodore color. So, uh, the result isn't uh, that good, but you can do some adjustments here. But at least it shows that um, it is possible to take a regular uh, image file that you have an, on your computer and convert it into Commodore 64 data. And you can also uh, make something called a character screen where you um, add characters to form uh, some sort of uh, character based image. You select this add new character screen i have already made one here let's open that so here you get the petsky graphic characters and you can uh, use those to build up an um, image something like that if you want to make some kind of basic image that doesn't require uh, graphics mode you can use this and you can uh, here also export to basic data and you can even export it to basic code so if you select this one to basic and make a new file it created this uh, complete basic program to render the image that you drew so we can actually just uh, run that directly and here we see how it looks in the uh, device emulator and you can actually list the program so uh, this is much faster than actually typing uh, all these print statements and getting every character correct and the color information and things like that. So this is uh, very handy if you want to make uh, programs uh, like this. All right, I think that covers uh, the basic stuff. Uh, there are also some uh, other tools here uh, that you can uh, check out if you want to. There's a binary editor and uh, if you go into uh, preferences here, you can uh, tweak how the IDE works and yeah, things like uh, colors and uh, everything like that. There's a calculator <laughs> to convert from decimal. Let's say uh, we had 1496. So that is actually a hex 1000 and uh, that's the binary representation. You also have uh, the Petsky table. If you want to know the, the ASCII value of uh, the Petsky characters, you find those here. And there's of course uh, a lot of more advanced uh, features. For example, uh, every file has a properties page where you can uh, select which kind of assembler you want to use, how to compile it, uh, what kind of target type you want, if you just want a plane or you want to produce a T64 or cartridge, things like that. Uh, configure the debugger, 
the build events, for example, after the build is finished, you can uh, add commands to be run and so really powerful. However, uh, there is a lot of example projects uh, coming along with uh, C64 Studio, so we can uh, try and load uh, some of those. It's here under sample projects. So uh, let's try this uh, basic and assembly. So uh, here's the sample project. It has a main bus that uh, loads uh, the assembly code and runs it. Here is the assembly code. Run that. So yeah, this is what I'm talking about. It um, actually called uh, a machine code routine with the sys command and then print some uh, text with basic afterwards. Let's try another one. Santa Claus basic. <laughs> it's Christmas soon, so um, that's in the spirit of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is it a game or is it just a mock-up? Feuerknopf drücken, that's uh, German. I have a joystick connected. Yeah, it's actually a game. <laughs> Let's uh, go into full screen. So you want to hit that... Uh, You want to hit that rider. Oh, yeah. So that was kind of fun. So now we can take a look at this. This uh, seems to be just uh, one file of basic, but uh, it has a lot of uh, data statements that are probably uh, machine code routines and sprites. One more thing I want to show you, if you find a Commodore 64 tape or a disk image file, you can in fact open those here. Uh, let's see if I can find a disk file, a D64. Yeah, this is the Commodore Christmas demo that you see in my intro of uh, this video. And uh, yeah, here you actually see the content of the disk and uh, you can actually take uh, this and export it into a basic file inside C64 Studio. Let's try that. Export it to basic V2. And there you go. There's the code for uh, that Christmas demo. And now I can show you the code for uh, the Commodore basic uh, advent calendar intro that I made myself. So here's three versions. The last one is this number three and just click this uh, button here to uh, open in basic editor and there you have the code is uh, <laughs> as you can see it's uh, not very complicated we can try and run it so there it is <laughs> i actually did some more changes to this like the color flickering but uh, i didn't save that i just uh, took a screen recording of that and imported it into my videos so if you think the font is a little small in the editor, you can uh, make it larger by control clicking and using the mouse scroll wheel here as well. So now it's uh, much more readable for old guys like me. <laughs> Lastly, I want to show you that uh, it actually comes with uh, extended uh, help. So if you select help, then you can get all the things you need to know about uh, the C64 Studio. Good explanations about everything. All right, I think that was it for this video. I just want to say thanks for watching. And uh, if you liked it, then hit the like button. And a special thanks uh, to my patrons. Uh, see you later. Bye bye.